under diagnostic guidance the targeted lesion is located and the correct path and distance determined. The easy to adjust depth stopper on the introducer is set. And after a small skin incision is made, the introducer is inserted. It is rotated counterclockwise down to the surface of the bone, thus minimizing trauma to the soft tissue. At the bone surface, the introducer is now advanced with a back and forth motion until the tip of the cannula is anchored in the periosteum. Here, if desired, the trocar tip stylet may be exchanged for the drill without losing your place in the bone. To switch to the drill, the handle of the introducer is unlocked by holding the base half, unsnapping the top segment, and withdrawing the trocar tip stylet. The drill is now inserted into the cannula. After aligning the triangular impressions on the handles, the drill is locked into place. With firm but not excessive pressure, the assembled drill introducer is advanced clockwise through the cortex. While the drill tip bores into the bone, the edges of the cannula simultaneously cut around the drill, directing bone debris into the grooves of the drill and through the cannula. The unique technology of these two elements working in conjunction allows the introducer to penetrate and travel through the cortex with tactile control. If penetrating multiple centimeters of cortex, it may be necessary to withdraw the drill and clear the grooves of bone debris with a sterile needle. This debris can be collected as secondary specimens. The tip of the cannula is delivered past the cortex to the lesion margin. The position is verified under imaging and the drill removed. Now you may begin your biopsy. Placed in the cannula, the double mark on the biopsy needle indicates zero protrusion past the tip of the cannula. The adjustable stopper is set to the desired depth. Applying pressure, depending on the physical properties of the lesion, the biopsy needle is advanced clockwise, allowing the saw-like trephine tip to cut around the specimen. The sharp, durable trephine teeth of the biopsy needle core both sclerotic and lytic lesions. Once the desired depth is reached, the biopsy needle is turned counterclockwise for several rotations to sever the bone fibers and release the specimen into the needle. The biopsy needle is then withdrawn and the handle unlocked. The ejector pin is inserted through the handle end of the biopsy needle and the specimen is gently ejected. The biopsy needle can be reinserted through the cannula to obtain additional samples. If aspiration is required to sample a lytic mass, a syringe may be attached to the Lurelock feature 